absolutely. And, and marketing is not just one or two things. It's mm. the many spokes in the wheel mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that it takes to get your name out there and, and give people an opportunity to decide really whether they want to do business with you before they ever talk to you. Well, and he found a great way to, you know, basically exclude all those transactional people mm -hmm. and build on all the relational people like that. Right. That's, that's what you want. I mean, that's right. great. A yeah. Absolutely. So uh, I, I like the fact that you also came out with a workbook that went along with the, with the book. So yeah, uh, you could sit down with the family and go through a family plan and, and figure out where each one is individually, almost like a financial planner would. That's well, yeah, what you said is exactly right. And that's been, that is the best part of the whole thing is because this, see this disrupt, everybody's talking about foreclosures and evictions and stimulus money. That's not the real story. The real story in real estate right now in single family real estate is that real estate right now is going through or, or when's the market going to reset or all these questions that don't matter. The question that matters is, is what are you going to do? And how are you going to come through the other side when real estate's going through the largest disruption in its entire history? Wall Street is buying hundreds of thousands of homes. They're paying 30 or 40 grand more than you could ever imagine paying in a million years. And they're trying to disrupt and get rid of all the transactional people in our business. And the reason is because real estate, transactional real estate is a $1.6 billion dollar market, it's the largest undisrupted market. So if we look at financial services, which actually we modeled this entire program off of, and I got a lot of the ideas from that, because in, in the late 90s, when the internet started, I was in college and I wanted to be in financial services. I wanted to be a stockbroker. Y'all remember those? Yes. Right? $20, yeah. $50 a, a trade. Now there's no, there's no, you don't pay anything for trades. But what happened was, is that the stockbrokers, by the time I got to college, I couldn't be a stockbroker because they had already pivoted from stockbroker to financial advisor. Those were the people, like people knew that they were paying more to work with a financial advisor. They knew that. It wasn't like they were, it was a secret. Every year that financial advisors have been in our, in our, um, in our country, the, the industry has grown, the profits have grown you know, because the population is growing of, you know, those assets. There's always a percentage of people in every market that will pay more for something extra. And, mm -hmm. and that's what happened with financial services. And so it was like, but the same disruption happened. Wall Street came in, they undercut the fees and, and they went to online. Now, are there still people that process stock trades? Sure. Yeah. But I mean, do you think most of the stock trades are being processed by people or software? I would say with a keyboard. <laughs> and the exact same things happen in real estate. And if you don't know what to do, you're going to be out of, you're going to be selling insurance in five years. You'd be totally out of business because Wall Street wiped out all the stockbrokers. And by 20, 2004, you're not getting $50 a trade to be a stockbroker. Nobody gets that. But right. you can if you have a financial advisor. So I was like, well, who's the financial advisor, non fiduciary? Okay, of course, in our industry. All I see is a bunch of salespeople that that talk about their option and not anybody else's, especially one that doesn't point to them money wise. And I said, what can we do? How can we position ourselves to where we're giving people more value, not just a postcard? And we're in these folks homes because here's the other thing I noticed. You know, I got a CPA and a tax planning attorney. You know, you're doing great. So I know you will. You, you do, too. But I would go and hang out with my friends on the weekends at these cool locations and masterminds and stuff. I see you there. And, mm -hmm. and we'd be talking to our financial people, especially towards the end of the year. And then I go home and I go meet with Mavis, who is a bus driver and she's got a home and it's beat up and she's got moocher grandkids that won't, you know, leave the house and she's on her own. And she's got a little pension. She don't have no CPA. She doesn't have a probate. She doesn't have an attorney, a tax planning attorney. And I was like, who is going to help these people? Because there's nobody has a vested interest. There's no financial advisor going to talk to somebody that has no assets. You know, you would have no business. And so I was like, man, this is a, I noticed, I noticed when I was a teacher, I taught at an inner city school and I taught kids who were struggling. They were two years behind. These were ninth graders that should have been juniors. And I taught, they'd have no food to eat. 
you know, I mean, it's a tough, tough thing. And then I teach some kids that were the pre-AP eighth graders that were going to, you know, Vanderbilt and all these big schools. And what I noticed was, is that I had the closest relationship by far with the kids that struggled the most because they had the biggest gaps in their learning and I could help them, you know, with that. I mean, I could help them go into their games and just being like a, a person that cares about them. But they, when, when they have more needs and you help fill those needs, those people trust you more and they just love you more than the, the pre AP honors kids. I mean, they were nice to me, but they didn't really need my help. They could roll in and make a 95 without really doing nothing. They were really smart. And, it, and, and so I, I kind of saw the same thing with the motivated sellers and in the seniors, there's this huge group of people and it's a massive group and it's the fastest growing group in the entire country. So it's like, Absolutely. so why would you not want to work with them? So I'm like, we can, we can, in a real leveraged, effective way, take a 2000 year old proven strategy, which is books and tablets and just written down communication. We could give it out to people. They cherish it. They keep it forever. It's like a bandit sign that's in their living room. So we don't put them out on the street anymore. We put them on our coffee table and our book competes with all the other autographed books from the local real estate entrepreneurs, which is like zero. And so, and so we, we just found that um, doing the workbook, sitting with those fo folks, my vision for it was kind of like uh, for it to be like the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University, which I, I've been, I went through a couple of times. I taught it at my church. I thought it was a great program. Is it going to make you wealthy? No. But is it going to help you get to break even when you're struggling? Yeah. Yeah. And so I just noticed that when I taught that class, it was people from all walks of life. We had dog groomers. We had attorneys. We had young people. We had old people. And, and so there's a lot of people who haven't figured out this money thing. There's a lot of people who haven't figured out what they're going to do with their house when they get old. And we have positioned ourselves to be the clear choice. And now we have about 120 people who license our content across the nation. We're the, we're the clear choice for those people to work with because who else are they going to work with? A, a salesperson. We call it pivoting from going from Dan Kennedy calls it. How do you pivot from being an annoying pest to a welcomed guest? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the difference.